Well, hello and good evening to the welcome to the BIS Music Room and a very warm welcome to you all in the chat. Thank you for joining me this evening uh, for an organ recital and a little bit of an organ demonstration uh, of the new organ by Piotr Grabowski. We are in the Cathedral of St. Emmeram in Nitra, or Nitra uh, which is in the western part of um, Slovakia. It's the first organ I've ever played from that part of the world. And I've got the chat open so I can see everyone chatting away, so please do carry on chatting. It's good to have uh, Piotr in the chat with us so he'll be able to uh, answer any questions that you may have. Meanwhile, well, let's just talk very, very briefly about this organ, shall we? You know, this organ looks like a Baroque instrument, a little bit like the Schlienta Liebka organ, um, but actually it's newer than it looks. It's largely from 1932, although there are apparently about 200 pipes, which are a lot older than that. It dates from, the older pipes, date from the 1720s uh, and over the um, centuries have has gone through various uh, rebuilds, including the additional Ruk Positive and then other things as well, accumulating in the re recent rebuild in 1932. It has, uh, I think, 30 stops. Yeah, 30 stops. Uh, 12 stops on the Ruk Positive, uh, 11 on the Hauptwerk, and 7 on the pedal. I'm going to try to use all of them tonight in the recital. So obviously in the bark just then, the uh, BWV 541, you heard the wonderful plenum. That was essentially the, uh, the, the principal chorus on both manuals, mixtures on both manuals, uh, and I think also the, uh, the Nazard on the, on the Hauptwerk as well, with all the pedal stops on, all of the pedal stops. Um, I hope you enjoyed the cadenza at the end. It's the first time I've ever done that, so um, try new things. Now, we're going to just listen to some of the quieter stops. We're going to have a piece by Dietrich Buxtehude. Uh, it is my favourite piece uh, by Buxtehude. It's a wonderful Passacaglia in D minor, books WV161. Uh, um, very easy to see um, this piece as an inspiration for Bach's uh, big C minor Passacaglia. Bach would have almost certainly have known this Passacaglia. Perhaps it is the piece that Buxtehude played when Bach made his infamous um, trek to hear Buxtehude play a recital. I'm going to start on the eight foot Borden on the Ruk Positive, that's the lower manual, with the tremulant, so it's beautiful tremulant, before going up to the Hauptwerk for the eight and four flutes, um, before and then going into a, a plenum sound, and then it, uh, reversing that on the way towards the end. So Deirdre's books to Hood's uh, Passacaglia in D minor.
ending there on the same registration that we started with, um, obviously without the tremulant. A really beautiful stop that board and on the root positive. Very clear and as you've discovered, um, nice chiff as well. Piot, yes, I, uh, I apologise, yes, the organ actually largely is now from 2016. There was a major rebuild though in 1932, uh, but in 2016 the organ was built, uh, a new organ was built by um, the uh, Austrian company uh, Kugler in the Baroque style. I hope you enjoyed that book, Zahoud. It's one of my favourite pieces from that period. It's really, really stunning. Let's just leave Germany for a minute, northern Germany for a minute, and let's just head into France for a bit of Francois Couperin. Um, two very short pieces uh, from his uh, Mass of the Coven, uh, Convents, uh, dating from around 1689. These are organ masses. He wrote two, a Mass for the Parishes, and as I say, the Mass of the Convents. So there are Kyrie's, Glorias, and Communions, Offertories, and everything appropriate for the liturgy. They're very beautiful, actually, well worth playing. The first one I'm going to play is a dialogue for the trumpet and the crumhorn, which is quite literally a dialogue between the trumpet and crumhorn. So we'll have the trumpet on the Hauptwerk and the crumhorn on the, um, the Ruch Positive. It's not called a crumhorn on the on this organ, but it is a, it's a clarinet um, stop. Piot, what is the stop called on the root positive? Like, can you let us know, please? Uh, and then we go, then we sit in the same fashion, we're then going to have a duo for the TS. Um, so there was only one TS on this organ, that's on the, on the root positive. So what I've done is on the left hand, uh, I have a 16, eight and four flutes um, with a quint. Uh, that's a two and two thirds. And then on the right hand uh, flutes again, I have eight and four, two, with the nazard and the TS one and three fifths. Okay, so you organ players know exactly what that means. You people who don't play the organ have no idea what I'm talking about. Basically they're mutations and they, sound, they add color um, and harmonics to the sound. So two pieces by Coupera from the Mass of the Convents.
Well, I think all of those uh, movements on those um, mass settings by Couperin are really, really delightful. Um, there's a number of um, movements just like that, very short and uh, perfect for uh, services uh, for the communion and you know post uh, service voluntaries and preludes as well. They're really, really beautiful. Uh, actually, <laughs> people who play them, um, they are actually. Some of them are harder than they look <laughs> and sound. The, fing the fingering can be quite fiddly, actually. Um, not sort of usual fing fingering that we're used to. And of course, you have to play the um, notes in a gal and all of that sort of stuff. Anyway, hope you enjoyed li listening to the trumpet and the dulcian. Thank you, Piot. And the, um, the, uh, the cornet, basically, and the quint. Let's come back into North Germany now for some Scheidemann, Heinrich Scheidemann, who uh, dates from 1595 to 1663. Um, this this um, organist who predates both Buxtehude and Bach wrote some really, really beautiful organ, organ chorales indeed, and would have, would have been um, an inspiration for both Buxtehude and Bach. You know, it's very easy to say, or we should say, that Bach, as a great composer, um, is standing on the shoulders of giants like Buxtehude and Scheidemann. Uh, Jesus Christus, unser Heiland, der von uns den Gottessohn wandt, means um, Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who turns the wrath of God from us. This is the third of three um, chorales on this um, hymn, this Lutheran hymn, and this allows me to show off the, the clarinet again, the dulcian. And I'm actually bringing it down to the pedal in the first variation. And just watch carefully to my hands. I'm actually playing an octave higher in the first variation. I'm playing on the 16 foot borden on the Hauptwerk. In the second variation, um, I'm using the, the trumpet on the Hauptwerk as a solo. And then on the Ruck Positiv, I'm playing down the octave on the four foot principle to make it essentially an eight foot principle uh, with a 16 and eight in the pedal. So let's go back to North Germany for some Scheidemann.
I'm really glad that you're uh, enjoying the organ um, and you're right, it is a really clear sound indeed. I should just say that um, there are three different perspectives on this organ. There's a front, which is a, sorry, a direct or close, so with the closest um, positioning of the microphones to the pipe. There's then a middle and then a rear. I think it's called direct front rear, but basically close middle rear, okay? Um, I, the perspectives I've got, um, I always change them between the organs. So if I, if I have on, a, a, you know, a Nancé or Alessandria, uh, a perspective which puts us into the nave with more sort of ambience, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to do the same with an organ like this. This organ requires super, clar uh, super clear playing and precision. So what I've done is I've actually put the front or the direct, the direct ones, the closest ones, um, up to 100%. So you're hearing 100% um, of this. And then and actually the middle one is only about 50% or even maybe even less than that. And the rear is about 40. So you're hearing the perspective from the very, very front um, the most, which is why it sounds so clear. And I think on an organ like this in a, fairly uh, small acoustic and a small organ, you can do that. If you did that in Nancé or Alessandria, it might just sound a little bit too in your face and a bit too loud, and you almost want a bit of reverb. Uh, but this organ, it works really well. Um, now, just before we go into our final piece, um, the JS Bach, back to Bach, <laughs> Toccata Chorale and Fugue in C, B, W, V, 564, um, I just would like We've got about 150 people watching at the minute. I'd like you all just to give me a plus one if you if you could, um, just so I know who's in. And at the end, I'll try to give you all a bit of a shout out. So just write plus one now, uh, so I know who I've got listening. So this um, Toccata, Chorale and Fugue is, is in three movements, obviously. Toccata, Chorale and Fugue. However, the Toccata is made up of a number of sections. It starts with a, um, a toccata, definitely a toccata, a manual flourish, you know, on, on the manuals, uh, before going into a, um, I think it was a grade seven pedal solo. <laughs> I did that from my grade seven. Or was it grade eight? It might've been grade eight. Anyway, I did the, the F major pedal solo and this pedal solo for my grade seven and eight. I can't remember, I can't remember which way around it was. I can see wall writing plus one. I'll have a look in a minute. Um, before then going into a, um, a motivic um, contrapuntal section, um, which is basically um, the result of those three sections is a, a, a joining of a um, toccata and then going into a quasi concerto, if you like. So then break into a beautiful, beautiful adagio. This is um, one of the most beautiful pieces of organ music that Bach, Bach wrote, in my view, away from the chorales. The chorales are gorgeous, but this this adagio is just something else, it's really stunning. And the harmony at the very end of this adagio is just to die for. We then go into a fugue, which is, this is the first time I've played this fugue. I, I sight read the first page and a half uh, at the end of a virtual church a few weeks ago, um, but I, I stopped quite quickly because it just got too hard and I couldn't sight read it anymore. Um, so I've now learnt it and I'm going to perform it for you. And it's really exciting because I've always wanted to learn this fugue. Uh, so I have learned it. So J. Sparks, Toccata, Toccata, uh, Toccata Chorale and Fugue in C major, BWV 564. And if you haven't already, please write plus one and I will have a look at that during the playing of this next piece. Enjoy.
I don't know whether I, um, I don't know what I think about the ending. It's very, very abrupt, isn't it? I think it's, uh, the whole uh, fugue is a, it's almost like a tongue in cheek. It's Bach being very cheeky. It's very similar in style to the D major prelude, uh, sorry, the fugue, uh, BWV 532. Very cheeky, very exciting, and Bach almost showing off. I think that the ending is just so abrupt because it's just cheeky, isn't it? I also love the F sharp in the penultimate bar. That's very, very Buxter Hood. That's a very geeky thing to say, uh, but that's the sort of thing Buxter Hood used to do. Um, I'll just quickly answer some questions. People uh, were asking what the registration was in the Adagio. Um, it was um, the eight, Piazza Mir answered, uh, but it was the eight, uh, four, and the Nazard on the uh, root positive, accompanied by just the, the board on the Hauptwerk. Um, and the end of that Adagio was just the solitional beautiful stop. If you'd like to hear me play that, the uh, Toccata and Adagio on a real pipe organ, um, you can go and listen to my organ recital that I gave from Lansing College. I opened the recital with the Toccata and Adagio. At that point, I couldn't play the fugue. <laughs> um, um, SWS on the organ, send wine soon. Well, it seemed to work because look what I've just found. <laughs> Very, very nice indeed. Very, very nice. I can't wait to go and enjoy that in a minute. We've got the log fire going and the wine poured. I hope you can go and enjoy your evening in a minute as well. Um, the organ is for sale. I've just had confirmation from Piot that the organ is now for sale. There is a link in the description of this video. Uh, go and check it out. Go and look at some more pictures of the organ. Go and find out some more information about it. It's well worth having in your library if you're looking for uh, a disciplined practice instrument and uh, an instrument for Bach. You've heard Bach tonight, obviously. Um, it's, it actually is very clear and it would be good for practicing any repertoire, modern and early music. So go and check out his website. I'm just going to have a look through the chat to see who said hello, or plus one, should I say. Right, well, let's start with uh, E. Bibbs, um, Opera, Irene, David, Jean, Kathleen, Piot, Doug, Case from NL, David Hart, David Schenke, Stone, Ralph, Sferre, Mary Mouse, uh, Luxus, Dennis, Liz Rawson, Eddie King, John Maslin, Cheryl Hart, Martin Hogan, John Hosking, organist extraordinaire, Sam Sleeth, uh, Orgel Haas, uh, Francis Williams, uh, Pro Galmet, Nameless One, Roger Nightingale, Julian Drury, Gerda, uh, Maurice, Stanley, uh, Donna, Terry, David, uh, Greg, uh, Ado, James, Tony C, uh, Brother, Dunstan Townend, is that brother? Uh, J.S. Frost, Sebastian Hammond, Eddie King, uh, Katrina, uh, Sean, uh, Copier111111, <laughs> um, Marty M, uh, Mark, Paul, uh, Good Chappie, John from Man John John from Manchester, <laughs> John John Manchester, uh, John um, uh, Pestel, R Roy. Uh, Daddy, gosh, there's so many. David Fletcher, Roger Nassing, uh, Rogers, already said hello. Uh, Matt Leach and JPBAMA. Who else have we got down here? Uh, Jap. It's really good to see some good, uh, some new names. There's some names there that I've not seen before. So thank you for joining us. I've got one more ditty because there is a stop. Um, so those people who've just tuned away, um, hard luck. You're going to miss an organ piece. <laughs> um, just a very small ditty from the Orgel Buchlein, uh, BWV 606. Do you know which chorale that is? Well, it's uh, Von Himmelhoch da uh, From heaven above to earth I come. Oh, hello, Dad. Yes, you're there as well. Uh, Lost Place Zone D. Lost Place Zone D has written plus one four times. Well, there we go. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, Mum. Mum's there as well. It's good to have everyone in with us. So, the reason I'm playing this um, chorale just to finish with is because there is a stop that we have not yet heard. It is the uh, Zimbelstern. There are a number of toy stops on this organ. I don't know whether toy stops is the right way of describing them, but there's a, a drum, uh, a bird sound, um, and this nightingale. There is one other stop as well, which I can't remember offhand. You'll have to go and have a look on the website. So, a Christmas piece, celebratory Christmas uh, piece, um, requires 
as in Bushstone. So let's have a listen to uh, Von Himmelhoch der Komiche um, by Bach with the Zimbushton. Actually, at the beginning of this, you'll see me play a chord, and it's because I played the chord twice, it's because when I first played the chord, I had no stops drawn out. <laughs> hmm. Here we go. I think Rudolph's just arriving <laughs> with his bells on his sleigh. Um, what fun. It's a really wonderful organ, this. I really hope that you've enjoyed uh, listening to it. I've really enjoyed playing it. Um, I've really enjoyed putting together this recital for you. It was recorded last night fairly um, hastily, um, I hasten to add, uh, because um, as a lot of you will know, a lot of, a lot of you who are in the um, BIS Organs Association would have seen pictures of me um, publicising um, the fact that I was in Gloucester Cathedral recording the organ there, the, uh, the wonderful organ there. So you can expect to see lots of Gloucester Cathedral uh, appearing on BIS this coming week. Uh, that didn't leave me much time to practice, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so I'm, I'm amazed I managed to get that few under the fin fingers in such a short time. Um, I think had I, had I been a bit more comfortable with it, it probably would have been a fraction faster actually. Having said that, as, as somebody did point out, it was a um, nice to hear it played a bit slower. Um, yes, I agree. That piece is all about the, the rhythm, I think. It's, it's very, very rhythmical. And if you play it at um, a great warp speed, there's a danger that the rhythm gets lost. Okay, well, there we go. That's the end of today's organ recital. Uh, tomorrow, Sunday, we have a live virtual church from the BIS Music Room. Get your requests in. Um, my Patreons requested uh, some excellent hymns for Gloucester Cathedral. That's a week tomorrow uh, for All Saints Day. Um, but tomorrow we are live, so if you want to have, make your requests, send them on email, then we'll make sure we include them. We also accept um, your requests live in the chat, as always, as well. Usual time, 6 o'clock UK time. As I say, the, org the organ is for sale. This one is for sale. Actually, so, so all this one as well. Stay tuned. <laughs> uh, go and buy it. Piots, I mean, because it's very, very good. I don't know how much it's going to cost. Um, you'll have to go and have a look on his website. So until tomorrow, until virtual church, I will say a cheerio and a thank you so much, everybody, for joining me. Take care and good night. Goodbye. <laughs>